Just a minute ago, I, I was feeling uh, overwhelmed with um, just joy and, uh, and also some grief. Uh, some of these people I haven't seen for 17 months. So. I said to Craig, are we singing the American song that we've ever, ever sung? Just in case this is it. We're getting them all in. If we get cut off today, we're done. We've sang them all. It's really good to have all of you here. I've been getting a little emotional uh, from time to time. And, uh, you know, uh, for 17 months, uh, Heather, Jens, and I, and Barbara have been here on a Friday morning taping the service. And uh, lis listening to my voice sing is going to be different than hearing all of you today. Um, I've uh, watched some of the uh, websites uh, as to what numbers you can expect when you come back to worship. And they said about 36% uh, of your normal uh, attendance. And uh, we're past that. So I'm very pleasantly surprised. And... Um... <laughs> yeah, I'm It's been hard for everybody, you know, the 17 months, the isolation, it's been hard, it's been harder for some than for others, um, but uh, I, I think uh, this is time, it's time for us to come back, and I know um, the, the variants are still around, but we're going to proceed uh, as cautiously as we can, but it's obvious to me that uh, many of you have missed uh, worship and uh, you have appreciated it being up online. We'll continue to, to do that. Um, communion is going to be a work in progress. Uh, the offering, uh, we're not supposed to pass the offering plates. So that doesn't mean you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> we have a basket in the narthex in the back there. Uh, you can place your offering uh, there um, at the end of the service if you haven't done so. Um, David Woodrick. 72 on Friday. I told David, he, I think he's the oldest person in the congregation. <laughs> and Brian and Elaine, 63 years together. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have something? I mean, we've all missed something. We missed my 70th birthday, so now we have to wait till my 80th. <laughs> birthday Tuesday. Birthday? Today? Tuesday. Awesome. First 39th on Friday the 13th. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Happy birthday. Um, anybody else? Okay. I forgot a lot of things, you know. Um, I tried doing Qigong this morning, as I always do before service, and I forgot all the moves. <laughs> I've, I've been doing this for 15 years, three times a week, and I forgot uh, some of the moves, so I'm going to have to go back and, and check out um, we're, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Happy, let's sing happy birthday and happy anniversary to everybody. sung for a long time. I'll bet a lot of you haven't sung for a long time. So uh, sing until you're hoarse and then stop singing. Um, I think that's, uh, that's all. We're going to begin our service and the candles will be lit uh, as we sing, Be Still and Know That I Am God. It's time to get back into the rhythm of our lives. And uh, for all of you and for myself, worship is a part of that rhythm. And uh, for many of you, it has been uh, a part of your life always on Sunday morning to be gathered here, to be gathered in a place of worship and to sing the songs and to be silent and to be still, to pray the prayers and to support one another. And uh, it's absolutely awesome and amazing how many of you have come today and uh, it is time for us to get back into rhythm. Um, I know that uh, some of the tears uh, that I'm shedding this morning are uh, tears that have been there for a long time. Uh, we have lost a number of people in our congregation. 
We have lost a number of good people in our congregation. People who have been here every Sunday, Harvey and Adele Gerhardt, there was hardly ever a Sunday that they missed and always sang in the choir. They celebrated, I think it was their 72nd uh, uh, wedding anniversary, and uh, it was kind of a nice way that they died. Um, they, they died from COVID complications, and uh, um, Adele died first, and five days later, Harvey died. But uh, not being able to do some of these funerals, uh, the grieving process has been on hold too. And I think all of us are in that same pos position. And uh, the tears might come today when we're singing a hymn, or they might come at another time. But uh, things that we have put on hold for 17 months, it's time for things to move, to shift, and to change. It's uh, it really strange you're preaching in front of all your people. When, when, uh, whenever I was preaching with Jens and, uh, and Heather uh, and I made a mistake, we just cut it. I don't know if you could tell that. We would just cut it and edit it and go back and start over or whatever. Can't do that now. Everything's live. Okay. No, we're not live. We're not live streaming. Um, anyway, we, we will continue to put the services up because it, we have over 200 people uh, watching, uh, that's 200 hits, and, and unless my mom just keeps pressing a hit. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't get that many people in church on a Sunday, and uh, this is a way that we reach out, and we've reached to many corners of Canada and in other parts of the world uh, by doing this, and we will continue to do so. Um, very powerful uh, gospel reading that I just read. Um, and uh, we used to uh, sing, when we used to do, do the liturgy, um, some of the words that were in the gospel were part of that liturgy. And uh, Jesus began speaking uh, very difficult words, difficult words that were hard to understand and difficult for the people to follow. And it says that some of the people stopped following Jesus. It even says some of his disciples stopped following Jesus because the words were too difficult. It was just too hard for them. And Jesus said to his 12, he said, will you too stop following me? And Peter said, where else are we gonna go? Who else are we gonna follow? You have the words of eternal life. And we believe these words, and that's why we're following. This has been a dilemma for a lot of people. And uh, to be truthful, there's a lot of things uh, in the Bible that are difficult, A, for us to understand. How many of you went to a confirmation class, Lutheran confirmation class, uh, how many years ago, and it was very difficult for us to understand, wasn't it? I mean, I, I was born and raised in a Lutheran church. I went to a Lutheran school all my life and there were many things that I didn't understand. And when I got to seminary, there were even more things that I didn't understand. And I even quit the seminary for a short time, for about four months, because I just couldn't understand it and didn't believe the same way that I did as a child. And what I've come to understand that uh, there are lots of things that we don't understand. There's lots of difficult things that we won't be able to do that God asks us to do. But in my opinion, it is not a time for us to stop following Jesus. It's a time for us to recommit and to understand why it is that we are here. Why do we believe? What is our faith all about? Why are we gathered here as people of faith, people in a community? Jesus has the words of eternal life. This is what we hold on to. In much, a lot of my preaching that I preached about uh, uh, during COVID, I talked about the power of the gospel. And uh, the Christian church is at a crossroads. We are. And uh, how we proceed is going to make all the difference in the world. What sold before isn't going to sell today. 
Many millions of people have gone to church over the years because of the power of hell and the fear of God and the fear of eternal damnation. That doesn't work anymore. And you won't hear that being preached here in this congregation, the fear of the devil and the power of hell and eternal damnation. But then we have to find something else. If that was the power in the church for 2,000 years, and it's no longer the power, there has to be a new power. And there is a power. And it's always been there. And this is the power that we must raise up and believe in with all our heart and our soul and our mind and share this power with all the people that we come in contact with. It's the power of the gospel. It's not the law. It's not the shaking of the finger and the judging and uh, the fear of God. It's the power of the gospel. God loves you completely and unconditionally. He loves the whole world completely, not just Lutherans, not just Christians, not just people in this congregation. And Romans chapter 8 is the power. There is nothing in all creation that can ever separate us from his love. Joshua in the first reading spoke very powerful words. As for me and my house, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those are words for all of us. That is our commitment. This is the power in our lives. Amen. This great is thy faith.
something we've done for over 30 years is St. Mark's is hold hands at the end of the service. We're not going to do that. But uh, we're going to be Pentecostals and just put our hands, you can put your hands up or put your hands out as if you were reaching to all the people in this place here and reaching out with your love and compassion. Let us say, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.